Hey guys, it is episode 148 of Four Player Anime Cast. I am your host, Spire, joining with you guys on this wonderful 11th of July. Yeah, 11th of July, right? So, strangely enough, again, it's midsummer, but I'm not feeling the heat quite yet. I'm sure I'll be dying in the morning, though, so uh, don't quote me on that. But, anyways, with me today are my conspirators. Dark. Hey. Uh, pretty good. So, near. Hi. And, of course, Toast. Is it true that Koreans hate fans because they'll steal 10 years of your lifespan? Is that why you'll be sweating <laughs> just, in the summer? demons. Yeah, they're just demons waiting to kill us in the night. But, yeah. So... Does, that, does that mean Koreans are scared of computer fans, too? <laughs> I, don't th- I think they're slightly different. Um, so, yeah. As y- viewers might be able to notice in the title, this time we are not doing a or review show of the summer 2020 anime and the reason should be pretty obvious to you know anybody kind of checking in on our previous shows or really any sort of preview chart or list there are not that many series to begin with because of the current global situation and so we have decided it's still going uh, on yes it is surprisingly still going on uh, and so with that, we've decided to do another one of our lovely round tables. This one is called Survival Games. So the reason why we named this, of course, is because we've sort of talked about series using this term many, many a time, right? Uh, again, long time viewers of our podcast might know, you know, we just kind of throw out like, oh, this is just like, it, it's like, it starts out like this and then just becomes a survival game trope, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just not gonna watch it, especially me, right? I, I, like whenever, whenever I bring up, uh, you know, oh, this is a survival game, I do it in a very offhand, very sort of derogatory manner. So we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper on what we're talking about here. So, with that being said, I guess straight off, um, I, I just do want so, to. Kind of so, so let, let me ask real quick: What does survival game entail? We talk yes, in... yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so Toast obviously you know, uh, brought up our first and most important question. What the hell are we talking about when we just kind of say survival game during our podcast, right? And um, I guess I'll go first. So when I say specifically survival game, I mean sort of any trope or sort of general scene, mini arc, the series, whatever. And it has these factors of a basic sort of uh, win or die, win or suck, fight or flight. It has to invoke the sort of fight or flight reaction, right? Obviously, the the most important, the most common factor behind all of these scenes or series or events in an anime series is win or die, right? You have to, or sorry, not win or die. It's like select or die or whatever it is, right? Where it's like you have to you know, do something horrific or you die or you face huge consequences, right? So you have to select one person or the other and you sort of have to survive through these uh, bad sort of uh, bad and worse situations. Right? Now, now, does again, this involve killing the other person as an ultimatum? Uh, so that's that's a good question. I think, I think 99% of the time it's just like the standard right now is that it pretty much has to right because the idea of this is right i think i think the the core point that i want to push is that whatever this choice is right it has to invoke this sort of animalistic flight fight or flight you know greed or virtue you know lower lower animal instinct versus higher virtue that sort of debate that sort of moral idea right that's uh, so again that'll be kind of going on to the next point but I, I think unless it sort of drives that fight or flight um yeah so uh what pirate idealist is saying in chat here it's not necessarily i think the case where it's like um you don't you can have a series like where they're not like 
just fucking trying to stab each other in the in the face. But again, but I it, think but most that time. is that is a survival game if you know what the context of Bokrono is. Well, yes, you're right. You you are correct. Cause but uh, the whole uh, point the whole point of Bokrono is hey, we're fighting this other parallel world, and if and if we lose, this whole entire world dies. So yes, that counts. Fire. I, what do you think about just yeah. like Fate Grand Order? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, oh, nice, nice. We're we're gonna add fate in here. All right, all right. Yeah, now I, I have th- something. I is, yeah, I th- I think there is. I think the most important thing, at least for me, is again invoking that fight or flight situation within that character, right? So it's like, am I going to? pick the best one for my team or I'm going to say fuck you blah, blah. I think that's the that's the point whether it involves death or not um what about you Nier um I mean I don't know I feel like for me the most like uh just like instant definition of a uh, survival game would I guess mostly be like a battle royale format Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I guess, like the initial setup of um, uh, Yumi Nikki, or uh, uh, yeah, like yeah, Fate's yeah. Day Night, or mm-hmm. you know something like that. But I mean, there's also other like I guess, um, takes on it where it's more like, uh, you know, there's the outside force that's set up like some sort of game, like mm-hmm. uh, like a saw or something, where it's just like. Um, you know, the character is kind of trying to survive and, right. um, you know, whether they work together or not is like up to them. And then, you know, characters get picked off uh, one after the other, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, for, but yeah, for me, usually the first thing I jump to is the Battle Royale format, just because it's like, like, it's typically like the main character or like the main cast versus the other characters and then they have to like survive uh whatever like trials are ahead of them and usually that involves uh killing a bunch of people because these this genre is usually dark and gritty and edgy right 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 so exactly okay uh what about you toast Oh, uh, you obviously you you brought yeah, up. You, the... you see my comments in there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do you want to kind of go into a little bit more? I guess big picture, like what what do you think? Yeah, bat- battle royale. Okay. Stuck on an island, gotta fight the horny savages, <laughs> Ste- stealing your women. <laughs> you, you don't you don't read that one? You don't read you read don't read Ingoshima that one sucks don't read it then uh, Escape from Bug Island does that count as a survival game it does it uh, um <laughs> kind of I mean like uh, I guess like I mean it's a survival series right where characters sure. being picked off so I mean the survival game like trope or like uh container can be fairly loose right yeah i mean it doesn't oh, the God. the battle royale thing the, i think the reason why we kind of keep coming back to the battle royale is because it's not i think yeah so again uh repost and chat says how important is the quote-unquote game part in this right so that's that's i think part of part of what we're doing and um, part of what we'll come back to later when we talk about you know what actual series in, out in the wild uh, oh, okay. there are um is that a lot of survival game series kind of just say, okay, well, everybody's thrown in an arena, get ready, kind of thing, right? Um, although there are variants of it. So I think it's less that... I think it's less that survival games have to be kind of centered around the Battle Royale, and more the fact that a lot of series like that are just kind of, I want to say, lazily centered around the Battle Royale, right? Yeah. So... Well, why why why, why, do, why do survival games gotta be kill or be killed? Is that because well, that's, it, that's the this the discussion we're gonna be is having? That, is that because it's primal human nature? Again, like I said, a lot of these series are very dark and dark gritty adult. and edgy. And, I, 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 I,
Yeah. The the but, uh, dark the dark side of human society. Yeah. It's like, I mean, oh. again, very good question. <laughs> we were, but yeah, uh, yeah um, I don't know. It, it, it's it get it does get stale over a while. It's like oh, kill or be killed, and I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. Toast Toast is definitely you know obviously jumping ahead a little bit. We're gonna be talking a lot about you know what Toast just said, but definitely again as as he as he described. Something like a battle royale, a little bit more like a kill, be killed, is usually the stuff that pops up into your head when you think about these things. Near, uh, near, near. Yep. You watched Handshakers, right? <sighs> I watched. <laughs> I watched as much Handshakers as my motion sickness would allow me to. I forgot what Handshakers was about. Was it? Was it a giant Jenkin tournament? Oh no. my god! Oh. Handshakers was like. Just a big fucking murder power game, wasn't it? Uh, is, no, sure, yeah. is no game no life a survival game? It is, isn't it? Uh, no. No. No, because no, they're not in like a structured game, right? They're just in like that world. Yeah, the the world has games as a mechanic, like but it's not like you could get shit from people, but it's not. They're, like they're not in like a constant like play, oh, like... Uh, what, the the god like Tet or whatever, right? The god games isn't like all right, everybody. If there isn't one person remaining on the battlefield in like you know in the next year, then I'm just gonna nuke everybody. There, <laughs> it's just that the game stuff is part of the mechanic of that world. So, Sao is more of a survival game than no game, no life. <laughs> <laughs> the first arc, at least. Sure. But Sword Art, I guess? But Sword Art Online isn't much of a survival game either, right? It's... Only the first arc. I mean, is... is... <laughs> I mean... See... You, could, you could portray it as one, right? Because, like, the idea is, like, play the game or die, right? Um... Yeah. It's Let's... a bit. It's a bit more loose, but it, play the game like... or be forever stuck there. In a sense, yeah. I guess. Um... I guess in the in, in a very loose sense, yeah. I I could see that. I can see that. Yeah. Now, now here's my other last last question: Is Stay Alive a survival game movie? <sighs> what? What is Stay Alive? Wait, the... is that the shitty movie with, with Frankie, Frankie Muniz? Muniz? Yeah. Holy yeah. Shit, wow, dude. that is a fucking pull oh, <laughs> yeah hell. i was like googling and i was like what is this movie it's it's great i hate it but it's great wow i uh, forgot yeah, about this yeah. <laughs> i mean that's kind of a survival game right like i get I think so yeah yeah so so my overall general question is how far does the rabbit hole go how what what is the loosest term a survival game will be able to talk about? Again, I, I talked about I brought up Idol Master, right? Because the, the Namco Zeno one Glossia? The, No, the one after Xenoglossia uh. is the one where um there's the evil corporation that's trying to like compete and like That's that's know, not that's not a survival game. That's a that's, I mean it's a one ver it's it's a, it's like a this company versus this company kind of thing. It's not you really a survival. Really spin, you can really spin like any game show that has like multiple contestants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's as the a, as a survival game. That's right? like, that's that's the point I was trying to make. It has to have like some, but yeah. All, <laughs> yeah, it has no, to I have agree. multiple yeah. groups acting against this one per one person or organization, not just one v one. That's that's just a versus mode. So whoa, you can have one v one, right? You can have that's a main not... thing, but you got to have multiple other little. Little ones going after you too. It's... The, the, the point well, isn't that it has multiple people. The point is that one of them, the the lose condition is so severe, and the and the part of the event condition is so severe that it fucks up people, right? Like it fucks up how people behave, right? Isn't that isn't that the point? Mm, like it doesn't matter whether there's three people playing the survival game or there's fifty people. It's the fact that like I don't know the event is like you have to chop off your hand or or your friend dies UP, or some UP. shit like that right <laughs> that's, that's but i mean like as long as it's not one like our 1v1 situation or one thing versus another one thing is this as long as that's two or more working against you then it's a survival situation right well you can you can't you still have because like there are there are those like sort of game theory games right I, where it's well, like what about team versus team 
Like, yeah. there's two teams. Yeah, that, that counts. That, that would count, wouldn't it? Yeah, as long but as... I mean, one versus... The, what I'm saying is, like, they're still sort of essentially 1v1 both game theory and anime versions of that, right? Like, in Death Parade, it's essentially just, like, kind of like a 1v1 thing, right? Where it's, like, you have just, like, like there's, like... It's it's one person related with another person, and they're sort of making the option, right? So I don't think it necessarily has to be limited to however however many or however uh, little uh, people there are, right? I mean, as long as it's one, if you're gonna talk like if it's one person versus one person, it has to be the, the main bad bad guy versus the protagonist, but in the middle, interspersed, there's gonna be. Hey, you have to fight my underlings or whatnot. That would still count as a survival game, wouldn't it? Because if it's just one person fighting one another one person, with no other people interspersed in between that or whatever, it's just still it's still a versus thing. It's not a survival oh, yeah, so situation. So, you know, I I think what we're kind of getting stuck over here is the idea of like wh what we mean when we like compete or like fight against each other, right? Because like. What I'm thinking is like that could sort of that fighter competition, right? Could also involve again these sorts of like, um, like game theory types kind of thing, right? Where it's like, um, you know, you know those games where it's like, but I don't know, like you have two people and then like if you guys both write the same thing, then both of you survive, right? But then if like one of you, uh, one of only one of you write the thing and the other one writes the other thing, then only one of you survive, you know, stuff like that. Like, about, like the escape game or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Stuff does, like that. Does that count, that, or is, does that count, or is that just that's an still escape? Like a, essentially, a one v one, right? Uh, but what I'm saying is that our thoughts about what it means to like compete in a fighter are like slightly different because you're like actually saying like they're just like constantly like, trying try to sort of like fight against each other, right? Um, so ho so and, hold on. Yeah. Does that mean the room is a survival game and not a uh, escape game? Not not Tommy Wiseau on the, the 20... room. What? There's a 2019 film I watched on Amazon called The Room, and it was about a bunch of people escaping Why a bunch you... of escape rooms. It was Why free. Would you ever call your film The Room? I know, right? But yeah. Okay. So, was it The Room? No, no, it's called The Escape, right? I mean, apparently I there know. was a movie called The Room in 2019. Oh, that's yeah. not the one. Escape Room. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Tommy Wiseau. But yeah, is Escape Room, which is a movie about escape rooms, is that a survival game or is that an escape room genre? I mean, would you consider like Saw 2 a survival game? That is a good question. Well, what I'm saying is, again, I, I still think that something like The Prisoner's Dilemma, right, which is the classic sort of uh, game yeah. theory problem, right, Yeah, is a sort of one v one in a sense, right? Obviously, you can work together, duh, right? Right? But there is there is a sort of Im implied, almost forced competitive aspect, right? Because that's the whole point of the game theory, right? If you guys aren't like, oh man, I might have to fuck this guy, right? Then in the butt. You know, why is there a prisoner's dilemma in the first place, right? Um, so I think that's a one v one that still works in in the sense that you're talking about, but. Obviously, if they're just duking it out against each other, right? Yeah, then it's not it's not a survival game. <laughs> if if it's just like hero versus protagonist, and they're pretty I much mean, out to get each other, then then it's, it's just a shonen series. <laughs> yeah, it's just a shonen series, right? So I think that's the difference. So uh, like, okay, so, out. uh, so Circle isn't a survival game. Circle survival game? Huh? I don't know. I'm I'm throwing out these weird ass movies I watch on Amazon. I mean, well, have you guys, hard to, it, have you guys it's seen the circle? It was about uh, it was about a bunch of people in a black room with red lights, and then every so often, one of them dies, and they have to pick who dies next. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a survival game. Yeah, like, I'm reading that would right, be right. yeah, that would be a survival. Yeah, um, because they vote but... they because they vote on who get who dies next. Yeah. Uh, I, All right. I think good. Yeah. Because of, yeah. because there's some sort of like there's like a group sort of like deliberation on like who's being taken out right right right, right. There's some yeah, sort yeah. of like character motivation between the characters of like like somebody needs to die the, the choice be, the right? choice 
it's like the 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 again i think i think we're centering around the idea again what i kind of listed earlier which is somebody needs to make a choice that creates this sort of fight or flight reaction this creates some sort of uncomfortable will i go for myself and my greed or some low animalistic you know what people like to say right oh you're so greedy you're so animal blah blah right those values or will you take the high ground right or will you be virtuous will you be for the team blah blah all these things right and that sort of struggle right if it's not making that sort of struggle then it's obviously um it's a little bit harder to call it a survival game at least in my opinion but yeah, yeah, so so I think I think we're sort of going back and forth with the same definitions. So I think we have a pretty solid, I think, rundown of what it means to have a survival game here. So I'm just going to go into the next question, right? Um, so the next question again, Toast sort of <laughs> uh, went ahead uh, and said these, said a couple of these at the beginning. But why do you guys think are these sorts of survival game tropes used in series. So so when you see like, oh, somebody's using the sort of survival game scene or event or arc or it's just the backbone of a series or whatever, right? What's the first thing that pops up? It's like, oh, the author did this because they want to blank. It's the dark side of human civilization. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the easiest uh, way... Lord of the Flies? Lord of the Flies? <laughs> yeah, it's the easiest way to be like, oh, my characters are morally gray when... <laughs> The author like doesn't really know what morally gray means, yeah, so this or is really how to write a morally gray character. Because <laughs> let's be honest, you could be like a saint, right? Right, right. right. And you know, every once in a while, there will be like one character that'd be like, "Yeah, uh, you know, I'll sacrifice myself for like the good, like the lives of the the like greater." Uh, amount of people that are around you, right? Um, but when you come down to like the average person, uh, which is typically what anime uh, and like manga creators are trying to write, right? They're trying to create like relatable people that are, you know, somewhat human. Um, everyone's going to be selfish, right? Everyone's right. going to exactly. either fight or flight gets everybody, right? Yeah, it's everyone's like... either going to try to protect themselves. Or like the people they care about, right? So if you have like ten people in a room, and two of like three of the people in the room are very close friends or family, even, right? There's no chance in like any situation that those three people are going to give each other up before the rest of those ten people. Right. right, right. Oh, yeah. So, so, so say, actually, fucking Sessiyon stole my line. <laughs> so, fuck you, Sessiyon. <laughs> yeah, kidding. I but, mean, zombie, but, zombie but, movies. Yeah, zo- but yeah, I was about to say zombie thing, movies right? are, yeah, zombie movies you, are all survival. Yeah, exactly. you put a set of characters exactly. into a setting, and outside of that setting, or like, like whatever, is threatening, you know, to break into like the safety that the current characters are in, or whatever. Um, You know, it, it's to show that, like, regardless of how small your group is mm-hmm. there is going to be groups within that group right and there has to be conflict there are there's going to be conflict given yeah, eventually, enough points yeah eventually those groups will exactly. uh whittle down to individuals because mm-hmm. the individual at the end of the day only cares about himself right um, and it really doesn't matter how morally gray you want to be insert joker uh, lines etc cetera, etc cetera, et yeah, yeah. You, you're always <laughs> you're always gonna like if there's a guy if you're climbing up a ladder and the guy under you uh is getting eaten alive by zombies and he starts dragging you down the ladder you're gonna kick yeah. him in the fucking head yeah exactly. kick him into the horizon like yeah there's no like other choice there yeah, right? yeah exactly so uh, i mean yeah like the the battle right or sorry the survival game um backdrop to me is usually just be like oh i want to i want to have dark gritty morally gray characters that like they don't they don't fuck around and and it's like i mean everybody is going to make the same decisions regardless in that situation right Mm -hmm. so unless you're creating like a truly unique scenario um which is interesting uh which uh gives 
maybe a bit more uh, thought-provoking character introspection than hmm, who, how many people will I kill today? Um, <laughs> if I'm getting eaten, if I'm about to get eaten by a bear, will I will I panic? <laughs> yeah, like uh, you know, uh, usually the the scenarios that characters are put into in these uh, series really aren't that interesting. Um, they're usually kind of just like. Uh, there's like seven guns lined up in front of you. Will you grab the person next to you and shield yourself from the bullets, <laughs> or will you just take it's, them it's, all it's, in the it's face? A very, it's a very trolley train kind of problem, or a, yeah. a trolley train line of will you press this lever or yeah. will you pull the lever too? Yeah, kill, like it's know. it's like the trolley train problem, but like there's you know there's five people on one <laughs> line and on Raptors. the other line is you, yeah. like you know. You're gonna kill the other people. Let's be real. Um, so yeah, that's usually. I mean, that's usually the connotation I have when I see a survivor is that it's typically just a scenario that the writer is setting the characters into to be like, yeah, I know how to write um, human thought processes in panic <laughs> situations. Humans. But realistically, it's just like the same thing everybody would do in that situation, right? Yeah. So. I, I I definitely agree with you. I don't really have too much to add uh, in uh, to you know what what you've basically said. Um, I other than I guess just to uh, find just to kind of go over a few points, but yeah, I I agree that it's mainly for. I, I would emphasize a little bit more strongly that the whole idea of the the most authors sort of set it up as. Oh, it's morally gray because not everybody can be perfect and act for the good of the team all the time. Although I would say that um, there are plenty of situations I think that have been shown in history where people have acted for the greater good and people have acted selflessly. So I don't necessarily think that you know the whole like oh it's so. Although there are also I mean, survival game series. There, yeah, there are also survival game series that show the good side, right? Where it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. There's what that one hero that's like, okay, I will act selflessly, and then the anime ends on a good note or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Well, um, well I mean, usually the, the character is the main protagonist, but yeah, yeah. But the, but there's because because I was actually reading um not not like super recently, but it was like one or two months ago. I don't know how I got onto this, but it was like, um, you know how sort of in Western civilization, at least, right? In Western literature, Lord of the Flies is sort of the quintessential survival game. Oh, you guys think, you guys really think that human nature is good? These people will eat each other. It's that sort of yeah. book, right? Um, if they found out that there's actually a historical example of essentially the Lord of the Flies, right? Where people, a bunch of kids got lost, right? But the funny thing is when they, when eventually, um, so so they had like this new segment later on like after the boys got rescued and the some guy took like historical accounts like ran around and took historical accounts and stuff like that and what they apparently ended up doing is they had like they set up all these rules and they made all these things like they made the freaking like makeshift outdoor kitchen like they made like a freaking jungle gym they were all like getting along super well and had all these like rules of etiquette and stuff like that right yeah and it was nothing like like nobody ate each other alive. Nobody was like screaming and freaking you know putting on face paint and stuff like that, right? It was all like super civil. So I think I think there's a, a little bit of room like that for well, sure. Well, I mean to yeah. be fair to like that like comparison, I guess is that you know that's largely just a survival. Like just pure survival situation, right? Oh, like, right. Like I, you lost. don't really have to. Like yeah, you, you're lost in the yeah. wilderness. If and, you kill you the know, other guy, then you're kind of fucking yourself a little yeah, bit. Like, too, yeah, like like human like human <laughs> logic usually dictates that like you don't know, kill the other guy. There's right, safety right, right. in numbers, yeah, especially exactly. especially in a in a tribal situation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, uh, most survival games aren't just like oh well, you know, survive in the woods, right? It's right, usually yeah. like you're in a uh, you're in a white room and there's a knife in the middle of the room and the first person to cut uh the first person that gets their eyeball cut out yeah exactly uh, gets all of their limbs fucking blown off and the the one that doesn't get their eye cut out uh gets a million fucking bucks and yeah exactly, exactly it's like 
like su- just completely surreal scenarios. Where <laughs> it's just like, you know, if your only choice is to like get fucking brutally executed or kill somebody, usually a human being is probably just going to kill somebody, right? Yeah. Because like uh, the the threat of like. Fight or flight is very strong. Impending brutal death uh, usually <laughs> overrides morale. About to get fucked in the ass, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I agree. I think um, part of this is sort of like uh, the other point I sort of wanted to make before we went on to this uh, Lord of the Flies tangent, which again, you, you make a good point on the difference between survival and survival games. And I think it, a lot of it kind of it starts off with this guise of great morality, but then transitions just into sort of um i think i think survival games is sort of one of the end points it's like you know how we went from escapism in again the 70s 80s 90s right and then we kind of start transitioning into uh organic realism sort of stuff in the 2000s 2010s right yeah. uh, i think the survival game is sort of as strange as it sounds it's one of the end points of that and what I mean by that is like the idea is that of organic, realistic, blah, blah, blah stuff is that we want to see the real side of human hearts. We don't want people to be pretending like they're good, blah, blah, blah. That's sort of the idea of it, right? And so that's sort of also why superhero movies, right, these days all have these sort of introspection, you know, even Joker got his own sort of you know, introspection, right? Yeah. Uh, the retrospection. Um, uh, and Superman, of course, has to be locked up because he's too you know he's running around too much you know batman always has to think about what he's doing stuff like that right and i think survival game is the sort of end point of that right it's the is is one of the is one of these sort of sort of build up to that where it's like oh like what am i really doing it's like how how far am i really going to go with this sort of guys of being good right what am i going to show my human side i think that's that, that's what they that's what the survival game thing wants to do i'm not saying that they succeed at it always but i i think that's the whole point of it it's one of the endpoints of this sort of realism well, trend i'd say in some in in a lot of ways like a survival game is like mm-hmm. kind of destined well not destined but it has the odds stacked against it to even like accomplish that right because it is a game at the end of the day it's not just survival yeah so it's like it's yeah, already all that, well, bullshit yeah that's that's why i said sort of conceptually because it's like it's very weird obviously when i say this right it sounds like oh you're stupid of course it's not realistic but what i'm saying is like no no, no, no but i, I mean it. yeah, yeah I, I get what you mean by like it's supposed to be the end game and whatnot but to me it's crazy that like you know authors and stuff think that like a survival game is like going to be something where they're going to like capture this raw human element. And it's like, right, you're already exactly. not because you've set up these like <laughs> bullshit, well, absurd well, parameters. I think, I think an interesting, I, I guess aspect of it is sort of like, um, the, I guess the, uh, sort of appeal, mm-hmm. um, at least on the face of a survival game, right? It's sort of like um, the viewer being like seeing, wanting to see like how far a human being can be pushed before they resort to like their more base instincts. Well, right? it's the same basis um, as anti heroes, right? Right. Like, dirty hero um, shit. Like that's the appeal, right? But the right. problem is, is that the survival game like um, setup it already has the goal of like showing the ugliest side of humanity. It right? comes in with a banner. Yes. Um, like it, it's just like, it's, it's going to happen. Like, Hello. You know um, <laughs> Hello. And so the only way that like survival games have sort of like decided to uh, top each other, trump each other, whatever, instead of seeing like, you know, like how far can I push these characters? It's more of like, like how little can I push these characters to how see how low they can go? Like instead of you know coming up with a scenario that's like realistic to the human nature of like where they'll snap, 
they just put them in a scenario and be like, okay, well, this character is gonna go fucking berserk for fight, no reason, fight, fight. and yeah, see exactly. how and show how like disgustingly brutal they are, um, because like the the series before me wasn't this brutal, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I feel like uh, maybe that's like just a falling of like the way they've decided to write it, but um, you know, I feel like the the appeal uh, isn't really met or seen by the writers, right? It's more of just like how debased can my characters get in this right. situation instead of how how bad can the situation get before my characters crack, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think, uh, yeah, that's that's a that's a good point where it's like again, we're gonna be. I think uh, that's the sort of general next uh, subject. I think I do want to go into dark. Did you have anything that you want, you want to talk about a little bit more about um, sort of why you think these sorts of survival game tropes are used in series? Or we head on. So. I mean, I think you kind of nailed it with the whole like it was supposed to be like gritty realism, but every single author wants to take it further and further. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, so so I guess uh, moving on to the next one real quick because Nier brought up a really good point to uh, transition from is that uh, actually no 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 sorry I apologize Toast did you have anything so, you want to, you did you have anything you want to add to uh, you know why why do you think that survival game tropes are used in series? No, Nier's got it. Also, but I'd like to add that uh, yeah. Most recent survival games, the, the the good, more popular ones, okay. they they don't start off with a with a character that's normal at all. They start off with a character that's uh, pre, you know, pretty introverted, like oh, I hate this society and whatnot, and <laughs> li- like like Joker, yeah. But then once they get into the survival game, it's all about oh, I'm finally free from the shackles of society. A time to show the world my true nature, and it's like, yeah, cool. Not really, but yeah, okay. This is uh, a society. <laughs> okay. De- so... Dead tube's pretty good. Yeah. Um. They added virtual YouTubers recently. Did you remember <laughs> that Kagi Luna wannabe playing? What was it? Uh. What's what's the famous what's the famous survival game? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Why can't I bring it up? PUBG. Kings. PUBG. Yeah, was, they're like, let's play a survival game with PUBG, and I'm like, really? We're doing no. this now? Is Please, it all no. about Fortnite? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In in Asia, uh, PUBG is I think still more popular though, if I remember correctly, for some reason, but. Isn't it anyway. uh, Apex now? And it's Valorant? Apex now. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's all about Apex too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you got yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, we should yes. all go around the room and t- talk about our favorite survival game. <laughs> I just like the games, mm-hmm. yeah. But anyways. Nier yeah. uh, actually a good, up a very good tr- point to transition from, which is sort of why... So, so t- now that we're done talking about, you know, what is a survival game when we talk about it offhand and why they're sort of used. What do you think are actually sort of applicable sort of real world examples of some good examples or some pros to using these survival game tropes uh, that you see in anime and stuff like that? And what do you think are some bad examples and some obvious cons. Right? Good, good, good. How how survival games benefit society? Is that how how they, society? The, the culling? Um, you, you call out you call out the bad people. Well, I guess I don't know. I mean, t- to me, I I feel like this is uh, bringing this series up was inevitable, so I I'll just bring it up. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, the benefit, uh, at least the, the one uh, large benefit I've seen, um is uh, well, i guess it's sort of a devil edged sword but um is like the the introduction of like the survival game um dynamic to genres that don't typically have it right like okay uh madoka right um, oh okay no okay you yeah. know you can use a a sort of uh setup like that um to take a genre that's maybe typically uh, much more uh, laid back, uh, happier series, and sort of take a twist to it, right? 
um, you know, uh, obviously since Madoka, a lot of bad series have come out um, trying to emulate that. But uh, I think most people would agree that Madoka was pretty good. Um, and I think it was one of the better uh, uses of sort of like a survival gaming um, type spin on an existing genre, right? Uh, Madoka right. isn't necessarily like a strict survival game, um, but it does have like uh, almost all of the aspects there, right? Um, but uh, you know, outside of that, it's it's kind of hard to say, right? Because like, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have you have certainly good battle royale series out there, um, you know, Fate Stay Night. Uh, exists right <laughs> it's certainly one of the biggest progenitors of like the battle royale uh idea in um yeah, yeah. anime in modern anime um uh you know but like it, in terms of like the negative impacts i mean i feel like we kind of touched on it earlier and how like it's similar to uh i feel like it's kind of similar to isekai but almost like with like less benefits, you know, mm -hmm. um, where like the the survival game like idea brings about like so many uh, buzzwords, right? Like like sort of set in stone buzzwords, like you know, dark, gritty, uh, more like gray, you know, <laughs> more like gray. Uh, you know, blood, gore, death, right? Um, and I I feel like the type of writer that attracts, um. <laughs> Isn't, it isn't really as creative as, mm. say, you know, um, some random isekai writer, right? It's a dangerous tool. It's like it's like um, a one ring. It's like it's like it's very it, it attracts a very interesting kind of people. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, it, it's certainly not as, uh, you know, like I said, it's a pretty loose container. But I feel like it's it's not as it doesn't give as much freedom as something like isekai. So um you know, a writer is kind of, like, boxed into, like, either killing off characters or, you know, writing them out of the story, because, like, what's the point of a survival game where a character just gets, like, uh, eliminated, and then they're just, like, cheering from the sidelines, right? Because at that point, you just have a tournament. Um, it's like, it's just like the tournament. It's like, it's like Dragon Ball Z kind of shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, like it's just like a fucking tuning exam or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The the detriments to like writing a survival game story are pretty big, um, especially if you're not like a good writer, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, like, there's good examples out there, right? Uh, you know, a lot of them are, or well, a decent amount of them are battle royale stuff, sure. But um, uh, I don't know. It's just it's a somewhat tight, um tightrope yeah it's a it's sort of a tightrope and it's pretty easy to fall off of um but you know like when a series does it well obviously it gains a lot of success you know fate is one of the biggest fucking franchises uh in the world um you know madoka is very popular uh something like death parade is very popular yes yes uh, yeah. uh you could even argue something uh, a bit more loose like uh Maybe like an assassination classroom or something, uh, you know, also very popular, mm, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, sure. But you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff out there too. So <laughs> it's a, I feel like it's a double-edged sword with one of the edges being much sharper than the other. You know. Uh, so what about you, Dark? So do you want to, um, yeah. Well, Nier brought up Fade, and I feel like I can't really speak for a lot of other series, but I think what one of the main things that Fade really did, at least in my opinion, because I went into Fade, especially later on, thinking like, you know, like not, like pretty much being entirely blind and not knowing, like, you know, oh, who was going to make it. But it's like, uh, spoiler alert, a decent amount of characters. Like, <laughs> there's. Like, Fate isn't really, I feel like the best, quote-unquote, like, survival game series aren't 
like at nearly as formulaic as like what makes the terrible ones as bad as they are right like i think of you know the kind of like the peak like battle royale survival game like in um i guess in conceptually would be like junie tyson right Right. every episode someone dies like you know it's just cut and dry you know exactly right, if you what's had to do the serial typical, you right. <laughs> so it's like uh i feel like the most survival game series that i've started or something do wind up doing that as well or it's very clear that like you know oh someone's gonna die every episode and like that's gonna be part of the spectacle or something like that mm-hmm. so I mean, I think you can still have that um, while also being, like, a good, well-written series, right? As long as you have, you know, a solid character introspection for at least the main character um, and decent character motivations for, like, the rest of the cast as to, like, why they're in the Battle Royale. Um, You know, you can have a character die every episode uh, without it. Um, You know, even if it is formulaic, like, it can still be solid right um but something like juni tyson it was just really messy right you had like the fucking the spectacle was bigger than this or yeah you had, yeah like, it was the you had, like, the... and it, tr- it tried to pretend like it had this grand message when it... yeah <laughs> yeah you had like the fucking necromancer bunny with no clothes on and I it's like why is everybody. why is he in the tournament oh it's because he's fucking evil <laughs> it's like that, i don't care uh, like, no, he wasn't. Yeah. He's just a psycho, dude. Okay. Yeah, he's Let's not see. evil. He's actually good. He's just crazy, dude. He's just pretending to be crazy. I think <laughs> that's what happened in that series. But yeah, no, it's just it, I feel like most series that fall into that though do wind up falling into just trying to focus on this like spectacle. Or rather, it's not even like it's not even because it's not even like Junie Tyson really tried to focus that hard on the spectacle. It like very clearly tried to do shit with the characters, but then it's like, but then it just kind of fifteen minutes of an episode to like every single character with like nothing to really root you, and then just them dying, and then maybe you'll learn something after. Right. But overall, it was just like I don't know. To me, I feel like it's difficult because. I don't know of many series that would have that of like a um, this sort of like central character that's learning more and more each episode or like having introspection. I feel like most of the time that I've seen it, it is a, a Junie Tyson like situation where it's like all the characters just keep fucking switching and you never really get like a solid grasp on anything. This is, uh, by the way, Junie Tyson was Nisi Oisin, right? It sure was. Shaking my head. Never let your heroes write too many light novel kids. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So we can definitely all start. Yeah, we can definitely all agree that. Never let uh, your heroes write dark, gritty series. <laughs> but what about Just... Gen Urubuchi? He should not be your hero. <laughs> yeah. When 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 Nisio Isin has to write a series that like doesn't let him write huge monologues, right? I think he starts like I think his like hand starts touching. He yeah. just like starts writing shitty series. Because Judy Tyson is like is like what a it's pretty antith- antithetical to what he wants to do, right? Again, which is write like pages upon pages of like monologues, right? Yeah. If somebody has to fucking die at the end of fifteen minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you have 15 <laughs> minutes to, like, do something There's no head tilt. Character. You can't do head tilt. <laughs> it's like, what the f- How is that even going to work? Yeah. I mean, maybe it worked in the light novels, but, like, in anime form, it was just like, here's, oh, yeah, one, absolutely not. here's one flashback. By the way, this character's fucking dead. <laughs> and, then, okay. and then at the end of it, just everybody gets bombed and then rat yeah, just, and like, and comes it's like, out. Yeah, and it's like six episodes later, it's like, oh, by the way, this character you thought was dead? They're not dead. Here's more backstory. Oh wait, they're dead again. <laughs> and the rev. And the, the, the funny part is, like, you could tell where it's like DC is kind of like, yeah, I don't really want to deal with the battle royale aspect of this part because those are the parts where like rabbit just kill it comes in and starts killing everybody. <laughs> yeah, like the rabbit just comes in. and He's like, what if I just like fucking killed this character? And everyone was like, wow, what the fuck? 
<laughs> it's like this life stuff. And it's like, oh, <laughs> ship your zombie now. It's like, what the fuck? Dude, this is a battle royale. I didn't think you were going to kill anyone. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, Jesus. But yeah, um, uh, Toast, what about you? So, I guess, good slash pros, good example slash pros of some survival game tropes or scenes or series that you've seen. And I, maybe can, I ta- first up. can I talk about the cons? Okay. <laughs> you, know? You, you know what's really good nowadays? Survival game isekai. And not 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 the base not the boring slow life one. Those don't, do those count? I don't think they count. There's no real uh, real long lasting conflict in those. It's like, hey, I, I'm I'm this cool guy. Let me do this with my. Uh, all-purpose farming tool. There's no real conflict in there. It's just, hey, you're going to do this thing? Okay. What I'm talking about is the real bad stuff. Like, survi- survival game Isekai Minecraft. Where the dude is like... Uh, well, I mean, where the dude was like, <laughs> if I hold... What about survival game Isekai Minecraft? Like, at this point... Yeah, I we, hate it. He was talking about fanfiction.net stuff, right? Like, it's, what, it's, what are we talking about the, the, the dudes, The dude's like, oh... It's just like my favorite survival game, crafting game. If I think about holding shift in my mind, I can run faster. And if I press C in my mind, I can crouch. And I'm like, that's stupid. Don't do that. What? What, what was I talking about? Oh, I hate, I hate, I hate I that know, isekai. Worst Don't read it. Example of survival game. Don't read it. It sucks. Oh. <laughs> okay. The worst you example think there are of survival any, game. Any like good examples? Oh, I, I listed a bunch that I like. Uh, the Circle, uh, Stay Stay Alive. Uh, Any anime? I like Escape from Bug Island. It's got some nice, cool bug facts. It's not... Is that what that one's called? That's not what that one's called. Really? I think, it is. I think that might be the start... one. I think that might be the actual localized title. Kyo- Kyochu Reto? Oh no, it's yeah, the, yeah. the Island of Giant Insects. Uh, Escape from, yeah. Escape from Escape Bug Island. Escape from Bug Island is a fucking survival horror game. Yeah, on the like, week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like gaslit me into thinking that this manga was based on it. it fucking oh, wasn't. no, 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 no. no. Uh, yeah. What were we talking about? Oh, uh, yeah. Ingoshima kind of. Su- Hold on. Is a. Uh, Suic- is Suicide Island a survival game? No, maybe no. Um, it's good, but I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, you could probably make an argument for it, but I, I mean, if Lord of the Flies is that, then I guess that could be too. Okay. Well, I don't know if Lord of the Flies should be considered a survival game. It's just survival, right? Is that yeah. is the, is the Eli Eli scenes in MGS Five part of the survival game genre? Because it's a video game. No, of course not. No. Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I I in my mind I I try to I'm trying to separate survival game from battle royales because that's I consider them two different. I can consider them different enough that they have their own names otherwise you you call battle royale not a battle royale i don't know would you consider fortnite a, ba- a survival game no it's a battle royale isn't it uh it's a survival game i mean it's a, i would consider battle royale to be like a a subsection sub-genre, yeah, yeah like a subgenre of survival Mm, but yeah, I think because um, it's like Saw isn't a battle royale, right? Yeah. Okay. A- anything that really forces you to have these sorts of like fight or flight reactions, right? But um, what was I gonna say? Yeah. So I guess for me, it's like <sighs> I've, I've always been, I've always been sort of on the more negative side. I think. You know, even in this in this podcast, right, uh, among, among uh, these guys, I, I've been on the slightly more negative side of survival game stuff, and that's sort of because I consider I consider a lot of the value of survival game tropes and you know the great morality thing, blah, blah blah, as more of more of a novelty of the novelty of 
exploration of cov- being able to cover this variant in morality of how people react, right? Because it's like, uh, how, how do I say this? Like, obviously, in real life, right? Every time somebody rescues children from a burning fire, you're going to be grateful. You're going to be like, oh, wow, that's good, right? You're not going to be like, oh, man, that guy did it again, right? But fiction is different, right? Where it's like, because you're making up the outcome, in a sense, right? You're not, like, looking at it and you're like, wow, oh, man, I can't believe that <laughs> the protagonist saved those people, right? It's no. you're the point of having these sorts of morally gray whatever elements i think for me right is not is for uniqueness is so that i can see some new interaction that i have not seen before in previous literature right and so that's sort of why i kind of agree heavily with what near said in terms of like if you add this sort of like hard choice element partly i agree with you where it's like where you add this sort of hard choice element into some something that you you know you might not expect or even if it's in you know some sort of action series and then you're like oh you know make this harder choice stuff like that i think that can end up fine but the important point is and i can't emphasize stress this enough at least for me is that it has to show if if you're going to go to the extreme of putting this very sort of unique situation, you know, fight or flight, are you going to get eaten by the bear or are you going to sacrifice your friend to the bear kind of situations, right? If you're going to have these sorts of things that show the extreme side, then you need to um, be willing to show some sort of unique moral interaction between the characters that I probably haven't read before, right? Um else i'm gonna be like all right well yeah sure he's the protagonist of course of course he's gonna uh, save the other guy or like uh this is the bad guy of course he's gonna just throw the throw his friend to the bear or whatever it is right so i think that's the important thing and adding sort of embedding or sort of slipstreaming survival game elements into new genres or new or, or series that usually don't have these things is an interesting way to go about it but I think for the most part, other than that, other than maybe, you know, sort of progenitors of their sort of subgenres like Monica, I haven't really seen much in terms of like survival games that have made me go like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> like I've I've never again, you know, longtime viewers of my fam or of uh the 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 podcast might know. It's like I've never been like whether it's it's not ever killing by its death parade, glape near, oh, summer game, Darwin's game, whatever the fuck it is, right? I've never been a huge fan, and I've obviously kept quiet on stuff like, um, well, on stuff like Modica, you know, obviously, again, it's progenitor stuff like that, but, um, how do I say this? I think the more important part of Modica was the was how home Homer dealt with sort of having to survive with her knowledge, right? It, it was like that was a little bit more interesting to me than like you know realizing or come to coming to grips with the whole like which is in like survival game stuff, you know what I mean? Um and I guess similar with mm, it's a little bit it's a little bit difficult for me to say logically because it's like I know that a lot of these sorts of character interactions are linked into these sorts of survival game elements right well uh, I think I think it's fair to say that like majority of the value that comes out of a good survival game series it's what they motivate is, the characters to do. Yeah, it's the character motivation, the character introspection, how the character right. develops and changes through the experience. The new, the through. new sort of things, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not so much like the value isn't seeing how, uh, you know, uh, this magical girl gets her fucking head bit off. Yeah. Right? 
or will she save her friends? Or it's like it's not really. Yeah, that, yeah. it's it's seeing how the character comes to the, the main character or the characters around her deal with <laughs> either seeing that firsthand mm-hmm. or you know um, maybe even being directly responsible for it. Right, the way the characters cope, the way they uh, move on, like beyond the initial like shock value, right? That's the that's the majority of the value, right? Because you know you can have a million fucking Tokyo Ghouls, mm-hmm. um, but if you don't have a single character that like moves beyond like I like fucking killing people, then it's like why are you watching it? You know, right? Exactly, exactly. I think I think that yeah, that's a good point. So it's like I. I want to say that for me, the important part is that the 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 sorts of unique variants of these introspections of these retrospections of these moral of these interactions interpersonally uh, involving moral dilemmas are unique are things that I haven't seen before. That's why I think again, a lot of the sort of survival game series that I value or stuff that have survival game tropes that I value. Are much more sort of like progenitors, are the forerunners of their sort of subgenres or whatever stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that I see nowadays are, it's not that they're like, oh, so much worse than, you know, whatever, right? It's not like ma- magical girl sight or whatever. It's like the worst thing ever. But to me, it doesn't give me new sort of this moral it doesn't give me new uh, like bones these new moral like dog bones to chew on you know what i mean <laughs> i need to chew yeah, on them. <laughs> it's, it's sort of like for the magical girl series uh especially i feel like um it's sort of like it's setting up the same framework and it's it's like it's like well what if what we just <laughs> what if we just run slightly different characters through the same like experiences and it's like well that's not really interesting to watch right because if you run similar people through the same experiences then you're going to get similar stuff yeah first of all like um uh, odds are your writers probably aren't as good um (laughs) like let's be real yeah Yeah, 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 if you're already copying a series you're you're probably not as good at writing yeah, yeah, yeah um second of all we've already seen characters go through these uh ordeals Right mm-hmm. in a similar setting in a similar manner, um, so like there's really no value to watching it again. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like it, it feels like it's like you know trying to capture lightning in a bottle when they don't know what the lightning was. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. They have a plastic bottle and they're like, yeah, I, think, I mean it's a bottle, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like. <laughs> It's like, oh, well, you know, if I just put magical girls in this series and I fucking kill them and, yeah. they, and they cry a bit. Raising Project has the worst. Uh, yeah, Raising Project uh, was the worst offender of that. Yeah, like, you know, uh, you know, if, if I just do that, I could sell, you know, two million copies, right? <laughs> it's like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that's it's, it's very unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I, I just like to see that. But on that point, uh, I do want to kind of transition on to the last point I want to bring up in this discussion. I know it's a little bit, I, I, well, I didn't. I don't think it's necessarily shorter in terms of discussion points than our isekai discussion, but our isekai discussion kind of took uh, a little bit longer to define what it was, right? We should but do yeah. a part two of that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, 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 someday for sure. Um, but our, the last point I wanted to bring up in the discussion while we were talking about this but on this issue, is that what are some variants that y- you might want to see in the f- in future sorts of additions of survival game tropes? So when I say variants, it can be like more specific things that you thought of, or it can be a little bit more of a bird's eye view. But um, I guess I guess I'll go first to just provide the example. Is that um on this subject, I kind of want to. I I think I want to go to. We've seen all this stuff, right? Again, we've we have Mirai Nikki, we have Future Diary, right? We have Madoka, right? We don't need another Madoka, right? <laughs> we don't yeah. need another Mirai Nikki. Uh, what we need is what we need <laughs> is Dead Man Wonderland Season Two. <laughs> Dead Man Wonderland Season Two. 
Yeah, that's a good anime to watch. PC, PC. Uh, watch Cat Man Wonderland <laughs> season <it>. one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, good, 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 uh, good, uh, good, uh, good movie, man. Yeah. We need, <laughs> but um, uh, we need another The Culling two anime. <laughs> we need another. We need the purge. Another. <laughs> the purge. Yeah, we need purge more purge the anime. Movies. Oh god. <laughs> We yeah, we, uh, we need we need a survival game anime based on the world's current events. <laughs> but um, going, getting back onto the point, what I wanted to say was that I know it's a little bit hard to because because it's not like humans have a hugely wildly like some sort of whack ass range of personalities starting from zero to one billion right or whatever it's the general set of personalities right is pretty similar especially right? under duress right exactly uh and obviously the the general types of um survival game stuff is also not that very Right at the end of the day, there are only so many events that get humans killed. Right, <laughs> some you know Jedi Council sits you down in a white room and you're like, okay, either you're going to die or your friend is going to die, and you have to choose. Right, like at the end of the day, that's sort of how it generally goes. Right, it's a magical force compels you. Right. Yeah. Um, but in that sense, so I think one might have to give up on the idea that these sorts of survival games will be varied that much, right? Um, because they won't. And the characters obviously won't be that varied. However, I would like to have... I would still like for future writers to put people in different contexts, in different situations in the survival game and have like slightly different motivations such that when you go down to a slightly deeper level, you see that they're interacting with each other on a much sort of more significantly different scale. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, I at this point, I'm, I'm fine with like sort of giving up, G giving up on, you know, having that much variety in the survival game genre. Right. Cause you, you, you can't, um, but I would like for there to be a little bit more variance in terms of the moral interaction, in terms of the interpersonal interaction, in terms of you know how they're like they let's say they got hit by something really bad, they watched their friends die in the survival game. But how do they think this sort of like? I, I would like to see more variance in that. I think. But um, yeah. What about you, Nier? <sighs> I don't know, man. I feel like it's tricky, right? Because, you know, you can put characters in, like, so many situations, right? And they can only react in so many different ways without it just being, like, comical. Um, but, you know, again, uh, to me, the standout series are, are stuff like Fate, right? Where, um, you know, it's not necessarily about, like, the situation that the characters are in but more of like how the situation like molds the character right mm -hmm. like uh, shiro has very like uh he has like established ideals right he he's a character that is set up to like he believes in something right and through the course of like the fate stay night routes his ideals are shaken and uh to the point where like he even forsakes his ideals for something else right? right um you know like he 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 changes uh due to his circumstances right um and you know it's it's easy to write you know a character just being like in a bad situation freaking out and then like going through uh trauma or something right Right. Um, I think it's harder to write a character that has like established ideals. Um, you know, they believe in something, and then through the course of the story, you know, that belief system is shaken, and they then have to rethink like who they are, right? Um, uh, not necessarily 
specifically in the situation they're in, but like just in general, like what do they believe in? Like, did it, does their belief system hold weight not only in the situation that they're in right now, but the situation they will be in after all of this is over, right? Um, so I, I think largely a lot of it is just like, uh, <laughs> it's sort of like, I feel like a battle royale or survival game series kind of eventually just had to turn into like character studies, right? Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I mean, in, in a in, in a, if you were to be very like sort of facetious reductionist, right? You could say that about really any genre or subgenre, right? Uh, it's a care yeah. at the end of the day, it's a character study, but. The, the, definitely, I think right now in terms of modern literature, it's it's on a it should be on a faster path, right? Yeah, I, I think for for the survival game series, like re- like I was saying earlier, really the only way that writers are kind of like um trying to innovate uh from one story to the next is is just making like more surreal scenarios, right? But Which, you have to kill them, near. Yeah, <laughs> right? like, exactly. Like, you know, I don't care if there's like seven people in a room, and one of them is like a fucking perfect copy of Hitler, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I don't care. You know, at the end of the day, like the character motivations is what matters, right? The situation right. is largely irrelevant, right? Um, you know, the situation only exists to bring out like some sort of. Uh, reaction or emotion in the characters right Um, so the surreality of whatever situation they're in it it doesn't matter you know they could be on fucking mars for all i care you know Mm -hmm. uh but like you know challenging ideals challenging beliefs you know challenging uh like what a character is uh in terms of like your story you know I, i think that's really the only way like this kind of story can really uh, advance in terms of like, uh, like a literature sp- perspective, right? Right, right. Um, you know, uh, the anime industry uh, could probably go for you know uh, another like five to ten years on making you know. Uh, survival game series where it's just like oh you're you're locked in a room and the only way out is to stick your finger up this dude's butthole you know <laughs> but like uh, do you think hey, can can on the on the subject can i ask you a real a real quick question just to kind of facilitate this but it's like you know how right now we're like if we see something like ready player one we're like oh come on that's shit's so cheesy Bob. right yeah. Um, you think we'll ever? But I like Ready point. Player One. I, I like the cheesy. Well, I, I like the I mean, Gundam you, part. You know I mean, even though general sort of general sort of reception, right? To to Ready Player One. Right? Yeah. But um, in in the future, do you think once you know we kind of people kind of get over this, you know, heavy duty realism blah 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 trend, which I think will happen in in whether it's in this decade or the next or whatever, right? Uh, once that happens, do you think? these sorts of survival game series will be also be viewed in the same way, like, oh, that's fucking cheesy, stuff like that. I mean, they already sort of are, in a sense, right? But it's, like, even more yeah. so in general. Um, yeah, I think the attitude is already somewhat there. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think it'll take, like, more than the current decade for that to become more prevalent. Um, whether it's, like, you know... Uh, just like an automatic response for a majority of people, I'm not so sure. Uh, I think the, uh, I do think the like survival game um, setup will probably eventually have to start like, some weird deconstruction thing, um, yeah. where like you know they're using that premise to like do something different uh, instead of just like killing characters. Um, uh, but yeah, I think we'll get there eventually. Uh, you know, like you said, that sentiment is are already sort of like been planted in the seeds of uh, a lot of anime viewers' minds, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it's kind of already there, right? You know, uh, I think for a decent amount of this podcast, it's already there. But um, 
yeah, eventually, I think the anime viewing uh, base will wake up to that. Uh, I think that'll probably happen for like just uh, like dark, gritty series in general. I kind of hope that'll happen with like the gray morality shtick uh, for like all literature. Um, mostly because it's I, I kind of just hate the label gray morality because usually when somebody yeah. like labels yeah, for their sure. story as gray morality, it, it, like they're just writing like actually evil characters that sometimes do like decent things. Um, you know, like like an antihero exists. You know, you don't really need to label your entire story as like some gray morality, like bullshit. You know. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of sick of like the the survival game stuff. Uh, mostly just because like a lot of bad writers pick it up. Uh, and, yeah, you know, again, it must, much like Isekai, it is also for Japanese writers. I mean, not even just Japanese writers, for a lot of writers, right? Like, yeah, you like sometimes you be, even, yeah. you know, decent writers will pick it up and, you know, we get stuff like Kiznaiver. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what Pirate Idea was just saying, it's like, and Chad is right, it's like, uh, he, he, he says, personally, I think most good fiction are, is amoral, but it's not really the same as great morality. I, I agree that there's a lot of... Uh, yeah. I don't know about most, uh, but it's like there, there's a lot of good fiction that's like amoral, but it's like gray morality again. It's, I think gray morality, m- more of the spectrum needs to be uncovered, right? And, and oh, gray morality as careful. well is kind of a trap. Yeah. Because it just turns into like, how are you going to do gray morality? It's like, well, we're going to show black and white morality. Right. Yeah. It's like, in the, in the it's middle. Supposed to be in the yeah, middle. Yeah. Like I said, like, like, like gray morality is like usually never in the middle. It's they do something horribly evil, but then also something okay. Yeah. Something right. Like, it's yeah, like it's, it's like said, really good. Yeah. It's it's it kind is. of like it's kind of like um how when I talk when I give the example of like how how rom coms work, right? It's like you get points with the girl by saving the saving their kitten from a tree, right? It's like that's the good thing that you did. But like with gray morality, it's like that's sort of how you get to gray morality, right? So you get minus points for doing bad things, and then you also get plus points for good, doing good things. And then yeah, what like a, that. like <laughs> I, I, that's how I legit feel when I read like a story that's labeled as gray morality. Like it's it's like somebody who played like fucking a video game with a morality system, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. bouncing between like killing puppies and saving <laughs> children from burning buildings. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This is exactly, a great exactly, morality. Exactly, exactly. This person's just both evil and good at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's just like a saint at random times. I just, just have vices, he's just like, okay. He's just a fucking psychopath, right, essentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely agree. That's, that's like the big thing. It's like, you have to... You have to make sure that you're sort of in this... Like you have to treat them like a human being. I I I don't I don't know how else to phrase it, right? It sounds very obvious, but it's like pe- normal people don't go like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking fucking put this kill this dog and then and then go fucking donate to a charity. Right? It's like that's not how that works, right? So uh, gotta balance out like, your karma, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, unless you're like Michael Flick or something like that, but it's like it, again a very Wow, Spire, too soon. <laughs> too, sorry, too soon. <laughs> but uh, it's it's a very unfortunate way of trying to make a story. Yeah, green morality fails because it's a reaction to black and white morality rather than simply trying to depict people in a nice way. Yeah, what uh, yep. Pirate of the Illus said. Have you guys sorry. ever heard of the Grey Jedi? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, I've played Knights of the Old Republic too. Yeah, you know, you you got the Jedi Knights, and then you got the Sith, then you got the Gray, like the Gray Jedi who have both Sith and Force powers. Wouldn't you count Mace Windu as one of them, kinda? Since he Mace Windu was a Jedi. Yeah, but he but he he tapped into the dark side. That's why his uh lightsaber was purple, right? Well, I mean, it's not just about the Gray Jedi thing. Star Wars has kind of. I mean, always <laughs> try to include those things at the same, like all everywhere, right? It's like they had those. They always have like a planet where pe- 
people have force powers, but Dude. then they sometimes use it for good Dude. and sometimes use it for bad. And then Darth Plagueis the Wise or you know Mace Windu, or like there's been a billion and a half examples of that sort of thing where it's like they did good things, but they were also Sith. You know, like yeah, whatever. I mean, like, 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 Mace, like Mace Windu tapped into the dark side, but he was still a Jedi that he adhered to the Jedi code. Like every every single Jedi in the Star Wars series has like had temptation, and even lost to those temptations. What about like, Anakin Skywalker? But they, yeah, he's a fucking Sith. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, well, he's, he's, he's he's evil. He was evil from the start. He was murdering sand people from like the second movie on. <laughs> Whatever. Well, didn't you see the concept art of the uh, of Anakin Skywalker coming back to the light? Where he yeah, had, that was weird. I mean, like the most like, the most nuanced depiction of Anakin is in the 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 animated series, um, like the two D animated series. The animated series sees, is like the only yeah. <laughs> he, sees, he sees the vision of um, like him being like overwhelmed by the dark side and like genuinely disturbs him, but like he's too clouded by like his own uh, like pride to realize like that that's that vision was about him you know like that's like that's the most nuanced take on anakin's character in like the entire series and it was like a fucking four minute scene yeah anakin's evil as shit not anymore <laughs> not anymore dear remember he got he got redempted don't you remember the end of was it six yeah. remember where he, he became a force ghost yeah, everybody becomes a force ghost. <laughs> not, not the evil Sith. You only saw Yo, 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 Yoden and uh, Obi Wan, and then su- yeah. suddenly Anakin. I was like, okay, you know, he he murdered millions of people in the galaxy. Now, now he's a good guy, and he turned back into his a uh, Episode Three young form. Yeah, well, let's be honest. Very George cool. Lucas' ideal of morality is not very good. So also, George Lucas never ended up really like. Yeah, <sighs> scooting. He, he, he like the moment like midi chlorines and stuff came, and you know that it wasn't headed towards a very consistent. Remember, Jar Jar is the key to all this. <laughs> yeah. He's a funnier yeah, well, character than we've ever had. Remember that the, the Emperor died, but here we are. So yeah. But anyways, um, so I guess. Oh, with that, I, wait, I. I asked everybody here, right? The the question for this. No, you only started with near. Yeah. Oh uh, no, 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 yeah, we went way, way too. Dark. Way what too, do you think? Uh, right. Yeah. What? Yeah. What What are some variants that you want to see in future editions of sort of survival game tropes or series? Man, I don't want to see shit. <laughs> um, I don't know, dude. Like, I just feel like. A variant of a survival—I don't know—just something that would I would call strictly a survival game. I just probably wouldn't be that interested in. Hmm. It's hard to say, really. I mean, is it is it because I mean you're kind of like me at this point in the game, right? You've kind of seen it before, and you're like, eh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's just like I don't know. It it would have to be like such a unique like setting and take of like just conceptually in general that i i can't come up with it like especially on the spot Mm -hmm. right like i i don't know i i get the idea that it's like you want these like character interactions and introspectives and whatnot but i don't know i just feel like in a survival game setting i just as soon as it becomes a survival game setting I do need like that setting to be very interesting and like grab me as well. And like any sort of like world building too. Cause if it's just about the characters, I like kind of would stop caring just because, you know, I don't really, for a survival game as weird as it sounds like, I don't really care that much about the characters in that sense. Like, because you know, most of them will be killed off anyway. I mean, there's that, but it's just more of like. Well, I mean, caring about characters is like the most vital part of killing them off, having weight. But what if they don't? 
But I mean, I, I can care, and like, you can have yeah. characters that get killed off, it's just a matter of, like, I kind of need more than that, right? Because mm. I, I feel like I wouldn't be attached, and I'd just be very conscious of what is happening, you know? Like, I'd just be very conscious of, like... Well, I think I think, I think think what, what's almost, like, Dark is, Dark is almost not saying is, like, he he's almost even past this point where it's, like, He's already where, where I'm sort of holding on. Where Nier and I are sort of holding on to this dredge of hope that like writers can come up with some sort of unique character introspection sort of interaction thing, right? To carry to carry the story through. I think Dark has already given up on that even that point entirely. I mean, right? it's, almost entirely. Right? It's not even it's that. Like, it's just it's that like he's, I, he's I seen the lack personally, of <laughs> I personally just won't be that interested. Like if say you if say you took an anime and you were like. Yeah, this anime has amazing character introspection and like character interactions, and I'm like, all right, but what's like the survival game like setting? And you're like, well, get this, this uh, guy, because, and he's uh, like a little puppet man, and he takes all these evil people. Oh, uh, so, so, so you're seeing that this like, is sort it, of a reality of the you know, of the survival game. The sort of if if it's like if if the survival game sort of setting is too incoherent, it just overrules. It's just it just overrules the other sort of stuff in the pot, yeah, right? Yeah, like, it's just, like, for me, it needs to okay, be, okay, okay, it, okay, it okay. needs to be not only coherent, it just needs to be a much more, like, interesting take, yeah, like, setting-wise as well, and set up. <laughs> like, right, right, I, right. I don't want, like, great writing for these, like, characters, but then, like, you know, dark-hooded uh, evil man is who captured, right, like, a right, classroom, right? right, right? right like, right. Uh, you, you, so, to so it, me, it, I'm like I just check out. Like that's the problem. Yeah. It's it's a good thought experiment. That well, well not a thought experiment. It's, it's it's happening, but it's like in a sense, it is it, it, the sort of extra abstraction slash thought experiment is a good one that Dark brings up. Where it's like going off what Nier and I said about you know these character interactions, right? Could you theoretically have? you know, a super, you know, smash, you know, better or good survival game, great hit, whatever, if the characters are really, really, really good, but then the survival game part of it is just absolute trash, right? I mean, but, it doesn't guess, need to be like guess, trash, trash. It could just be like, you know, pretty standard, and I'm just kind of like, eh. Right, right. I mean, right. I feel like that's most Battle Royales, right? Like, the fight for the Holy Grail is exactly like the most fucking riveting concept mm -hmm. right like they're, they're just fighting for a like a fucking magic genie right right so so but maybe, like so the, maybe the, the, the characters you do are have, there you do the have like the backstory of like mages and shit like that yeah the problem i, mean, the, I would have would be if they were there. like the holy grail but really it's just like seven people that like are just fighting and killing each other in a city for right. the Holy Grail. And it's like, <laughs> who's who's causing all this? And instead of like, you know, the fucking church and priests, it's like a guy in a black hood. So so, so it's okay. the, it, dark, it's the gas leaks, remember, everything is caused by gas leaks. Oh, yeah. going insane. Right. So so maybe what we can say is that um having a better and better survival game setting a more realistic one or a more one that's like not you know whack or whatever right allows for a sort of higher and higher uh literary ceiling for the characters to fill with their unique interaction yeah right? i mean i just enjoy i just enjoy I think a decent amount of world building i think right, regardless right, 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 of like right. genre like i i kind of felt the same way with i guess isekai in that sense too right Cause, what, what was what i was gonna say is that like like fate is certainly like good and it provides these sorts of inter introspe introspections but then sometimes it, it's it's a little bit sometimes hard to escape the whole like because it is I a very it, it's a very the the setting is a little bit more you know fanfiction.net kind of stuff it's a little bit harder to escape you know people die once they're killed kind of sort of these that sort of ceiling right um so so maybe if it was a little bit better I don't know what necessarily better would mean, but it's like a little bit better set up, right? Maybe it could, you know, reach a 
could have reached a higher you know a ceiling with that so so that's sort of how i'm uh getting at uh what what dark is saying yeah i mean you say that but i i do still feel like fate is kind of like the current ceiling unfortunately right yeah no no, no, no. I, I i agree i can agree with that too. but but near what's the highest level of this oh, i mean at least for me at least for me pretty much because like honestly before you brought up fate i was just like in the back wasn't even in my mind as like oh yeah survival game like of course it's a battle royale right <laughs> i wasn't even really even considering it mm -hmm. but is Fate Extra Last Encore the best survival game? I've no. uh, never seen it, so, you know. Yeah, they, test, test. I'm going to keep it that way. They yeah. travel through a tower. Near, it's a survival game, isn't it, Near? It's also the unironically worst fucking entry in the entire Fate series. <laughs> but I like it, so it's okay. Test, test, test. But um, on that note, uh, what, do you, what kind of maybe variants would you like to see in... Uh, future renditions of survival game is Air, do, you, do you consider oh, sorry, do you uh, consider anyway. arrow survival a survival game <laughs> do you know what that is uh no google, google it real quick oh i i talk about uh you, you know what survival games need more what wacky concepts or more wacky uh, concepts have you seen does it does that count um it has survival in the title. Uh, I mean, Which, isn't it great? No, it sucks. Does it, anyway? Where was I? I don't think it. No, I don't it counts, it but it sucks. We need more. We need more fun, interesting concepts. You know, k killing games is boring. The the last fresh new take. Not that's not dead to, is a real account by the guy who made Shishinki no mm -hmm, Iron okay. Maiden. Remember that one? If you have zero followers, you die. Well, that's also killing, though, right? Yeah, but who cares? If you have zero followers, <laughs> yeah, but you're you really not really? killing. You, you, know, you know, you know what's you it's know what, dying, yeah. not killing. There's a difference. You know, you know what zero <laughs> followers means? It means the death of your social that's life. Just a social death. Shitty Black Mirror episode, dude. So yeah, social death is the worst kind of death. And this it's also modern age, impossible right? Possible to hit zero followers if you have like <laughs> more than I'm fucking just gonna make five. A account, bro. Yeah, like uh, people don't really uh, like you I could. <laughs> yeah, you could see that like on YouTube. But what if people were people conscious don't even... of knowing that, like, if they unfollowed you, you would die? <laughs> probably the last person that. is like, "Fuck this guy." That, that, that was the whole, yeah, that was the whole point of real account, though. Faith. That was the whole point. Of it was. It was no, no. It was a. Uh, oh yeah, I remember now. It was a. Uh, if you die, all your other followers also die. So you have to keep them alive. It was weird. What? Like that. Yeah, what? don't you remember? What does that mean? Why would you follow anyone? Yeah, why would you ever follow someone if like their life hinged like, on your survival? Why would you ever follow anybody ever? It's oh it's God. like as it's it, it 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 was like if Facebook Called, uh... suddenly turned alive and it's like, yeah. It's like you you like that uh, you like that Twitter and Facebook. This Guess what? Like those... Now it's now it's a survival game. Called the path to world peace, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> this, this sounds this sounds like one of those um, you know you know how it's like on YouTube you see those ads of like B rate horror movies and like a lot of them these days are like. These kids are like chatting with each other, and then suddenly, like the screen goes black or some yeah. bullshit happens. Fucking it's like that. <laughs> kids <laughs> chatting on Skype, but one of the Skype colors were fucking killer. Yeah, yeah. Was, wasn't that a movie through Skype? Yeah, it, yeah, that was a, that was a movie. That was I haven't yeah, seen. There was a recent a one that was a Zoom. Movie. There was a recent one that was a Zoom call. Yeah, dumb as shit. It was yeah. uh, <laughs> made for zero dollars, <laughs> and. uh... Oh raked in like 50k and topped the box office because of no. current events <laughs> yeah uh now, now now we need that real account was made in 2014 so facebook is no more you know what we need now twitch survival game oh, God. Please. <laughs> if you but if you yeah. stop playing the game you you and your followers all die <laughs> yeah 
Or or even better, a VTuber survival game. Please no. But yeah, um Who definitely... who do you think is gonna be the strongest VTuber? Keys in an eye? No. No. <laughs> Not anymore. I have a, I have a few contenders, but I all no all every VTuber you follow, you, you cannot unfollow them. If you do, you'll die. And if your it's VTuber dies, you'll die too. <laughs> That oh, sucks, dude. Yeah. So I hope yeah. you didn't follow too many VTubers. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I guess with that we should probably wrap up uh, this discussion for now. Uh, definitely a very interesting thing to consider, especially again, because there's so many of these sorts of things out in the wild, and you know, every once in a while a new one comes, whether, again, it's Kiznaya or Juni Tyson or Death Parade, and then everybody's like, oh, man, it's so dark and, you know, morally gray and blah, blah, and we kind of, you know, we have to always kind of sit everyone down and be like, eh, I don't know about that, right? But I'm glad we sort of had this discussion. But uh, any any last words, like, any brief last words here about survival game stuff in general um i don't know i feel like i summed up my thoughts pretty well uh i do feel like the 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 use of like the survival games uh setup has kind of run its course uh, i feel like it's at the end of its days at least for for a while right mm -hmm. um you know i'm sure it'll make a resurgence sometime down the line mm -hmm. but um you know, I feel like a lot of people are decently tired of it. Right, um, right, right. It's creative uh, pool, I guess, mm -hmm. has sort of run out. Creative draw. There's a yeah. creative draw. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, I think people are just bored of it. Uh, okay. I think I think we'll probably, I think a few years from now, um, you know, uh, it'll probably like just die out. Um, right, right, right. For you know, maybe like six or so years uh and then we'll get another resurgence of like dark gritty <laughs> bullshit new um new with an nu new survival yeah, game because <laughs> like let's be honest like as tired as people get of like this dark gritty you know blood and edge and oh it's so real but there's fucking superpowers and whoa yeah. and there's magical girls and they're fucking dying <laughs> um you know as tired as of that as people get um that shit doesn't stay dead for like more than a few years, right? Yeah, because there's I mean, always I mean, authors there's, that are like there's, there's always also new people or like younger people coming in. Yeah, like, um, yeah. they see the appeal, they like the aesthetic, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think the current uh crowd is probably pretty sick of it. Um, so I think I guess the the wave is on like the downturn right now. Right, uh, right eventually right. it'll die off and. You know, a few years from now, we'll get another wave. Um, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I think as of right now, uh, Survivor Game Series, they're kind of just, like, done. Um, yeah, yeah. Need, need, needs to go back to the drawing board, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dark, what about you? Some brief last words. Um, oh, man. It's kind of, I'm gonna be, I'll be surprised if I counter another like one that I enjoy. You uh, wait, <laughs> okay. What? So, wait, what? I'm just saying, I'm not crazy. I don't like survival games. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely. It's like it's it's. An, I don't even want to say it's an acquired taste. It's like. Just something that I think I think it's like a phase. It's like it's like it's like for me at least it was sort of like I don't even know if it was a phase for me, but I guess for for I feel like it's a phase for some people. Kind of like uh goth rock or like I feel like it's phase for like the market, you know? That's true. Yeah. Again, I think I think it'll a lot of it kind of will start really going away once like we we stop getting these gritty realistic superhero movies right <laughs> but yeah. yeah um toast any ah. uh some brief last words please 
I can't wait for the real world survival game. Oh, wait, we're already in it. Nice. Fuck ass, dude. <laughs> I I'm go You're right. You're right, Toast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Jesus. I guess. I, uh, you, you know what's the untapped market? What? Chinese zombie cultivation survival games. Cultivation? And... What, what the the cultivation does the cultivation mean? What are they cultivating? <laughs> are they cultivating the zombies? You, you guys don't know what cultivation. No, we don't. Cultivate. Cultivate. You don't. You don't read cultivation, yeah, Chinese. Oh my god! What so, are they cultivating? Pow power. It's it's you know. What? It, it's it's dra it's Dragon Ball power level kind of stuff. Hey, don't so, you understand the Chinese? So what threat? Power? What threat does the zombie pose to fucking Goku? Don't, don't, I'm talking about uh, what is it? How does a zombie oh, make a Goku? No, no, no. I'm I know what you're talking. About. Are you talking about those series where it's like you have to like, like the the MC is like this like zombie master, and then like he gains powers over. He's like no, 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 no. This is the one where there's a post. It's the post-apocalyptic future. Like there's a meteor that hits, and everyone turns into zombies. And right. so, in order to survive in the in the zombie wonderland, you have to cult. You have to create a cultivation technique, which utilizes viral energy to turn, so you can fight against the zombies. This is this is like if the if the um, if the fucking plot of Guilty Crown went so, was, was like soured over time. So this is like what like fucking Hulk don't know Ken, but there's zombies and no other martial artists. Like what the fuck are you talking about? Kinda. Also, there was this one where there's a zombie. Like shit. Or this one where there's a zombie apocalypse, but this guy's dead girlfriend is a zombie, but she's not re a real zombie. So the guy goes around feeding zombie parts to her. In order to make her human once more. Yeah, no, I I've read that one. Unfortunately, you should read the last human. That's what the one I was talking about earlier. Yeah, or uh, what or or the Korean Tower survival game stuff. Yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm waiting for those to. Here, 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 those are great. Spire, read this one. This is the one I was talking about. Me meaty meteor zombie cultivation manga, because the Chinese love their cultivation. And apparently, I do too, because I keep reading them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. uh, I guess. Oh God, I think I've, I. I think I. Oh, please just. <laughs> I have no words. Read but, it. Uh, read yeah. it. Read it. I've, um, the last words on this, I think. Just. <laughs> Again, much like Isekai, much like many other tropes that um, these writers kind of encounter, I think you know people need to be a little bit more creative, or a little, not even more creative. They just need to be a little bit more. You need to invest a little bit more time. I want to say into what the details are. The devils are the devil is in the details. Kind of why the characters are interacting this way, and what sort of unique ways the characters are interacting. Why the game is like. Does the game make sense? Stuff like that. I think those are all, again, all very important points that we all brought up, and those are sort of the future of the series. And unless that sort of happens, which might or might not happen, I think, as Nier said, survival games are going to go go away for a while. So, um, yeah, it's a lot. Again, it, a lot of this is just about the details. Can't just be having people, you know, dying left and right due to guillotines, right? But yeah, um, says you. <laughs> fucking French Revolution. Yeah, shit. you know, you know what the real survival game is? What podcast survival game? Please, <laughs> you know, you're just like putting random words in front of survival game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I guess with what is the are... English language? But a bunch of random words put together. <laughs> language right. survival game. We already know Latin's dead. I don't know what grammar is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, English is the strongest l language that's going to survive. I don't know about a <laughs> French though. All right, well, thank you, Toast. Goodbye, Nier. <laughs> but, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> but with that, I guess we're going to wrap up our roundtable discussion for today. Thank you for everybody that participated here in the live stream. 
uh, obviously a big thanks to all the viewers out there as well. I know we again did this episode when we were sort of quote unquote supposed to do a review, but and for obvious reasons, we're kind of letting the series that we have right now soak a little bit, you know, get more episodes in, not get delayed for weeks on end. And uh, and then we're going to review them a little bit when we have more of the episodes out and more of the story out. So then you can enjoy our reviews a little bit better. But yeah, with that, uh, if you like what we do, we stream every other Saturday at 10, starting from 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over at twitch.tv slash 4playeranimecast where we talk about the latest and greatest in Japanese animation, anime, manga, light novels, web novels, visual novels, and so much more. So you can check us out here. Live streaming our recording of the podcast. Check us out our VOD uh, on our Twitch VOD where we have, obviously, the entire podcast recording. Check us on our YouTube channel at 4 Player and Mincast. And you see on our social media platforms on Facebook, 4 Player Animecast, and Twitter handle at 4 pp Animecast, where you can find updates on when we're streaming, so on and so forth. And yeah, um, next episode of the podcast, we'll most likely be doing the, we'll most likely be diving into our summer 2020 season. I think where we go with that again, please be aware that both the spring 2020 season continuing and the summer 2020 season that's starting just now are very, very wonky in terms of <laughs> in terms of scheduling, in terms of delays, in terms of everything, honestly. So it's a little bit hard to have our regular schedule as we did previously so please be aware of that please have uh, some consideration as we change around our schedule but we'll always obviously be trying to bring you a review or some other sort of fun podcast here our round table so on and so forth but yeah with that we'll see you next time